Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Parallax Image Showcase block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin. With this block, you'll be able to add attractive visual elements to your pages, which will be already furnished with the Parallax effect, so there's no fiddly setup required. This extremely user-friendly block will help you create appealing visuals in a matter of moments. We can see how this block behaves from the examples on this page. There is a background or main image and a secondary image on top of it. And the interplay of those two is used to create the parallax effect where the images seem to move at different speeds while creating an impression of depth. To demonstrate how the parallax image showcase block works, I'll be breaking down the last example for this tutorial and we'll start by heading over to the back end. I have a page that I will be working in where I already added some contextual content beforehand. So this is just a bit of text added using the section title block and the button block to go with it. And the other thing I want to have in this section is the parallax image showcase. So I need to add that block. You can add a new block by clicking on this blue button here. It will open the block selection. There is a search bar at the top and below it you will find an overview of all the blocks you have on your site. That means everything you get with Gutenberg itself as well as the key blocks collection and anything else you may have added. When you're browsing through this list, you'll be able to recognize the key blocks easily. They all have reddish pink icons that make them stand out. This should help you narrow down the block you want more quickly. And once you've found it, simply drag and drop it to add it to the page. So that's one way to add a new block to your page. But you can also add a block from within the page. Let me close this so I can show you. On the page, you can click on the plus sign button to the right or the plus icon within the column. I'll do the latter. This will open a pop-up with a view of my recent blocks and a search bar above them. Then just search for the block you want by name. Parallax. And there it is. Click on it to add. And here we are. And this is what the Parallax Image Showcase block looks like by default. It has a main image and two secondary images in the corners. All the images shown now are placeholders and the first thing I want to do is replace them. To do that, I'll use the options in the Content tab. The Image field allows us to replace the main image. I'll click on the bin icon to remove it and then go to the Media Library to select a new image. I'll use this one. OK. And right away we can see the new image has appeared on the page, with the secondary images, or items more precisely, still showing the placeholder visuals. But before we replace them, we have a few settings for the main image that we should cover first. Those involve the image size option, where we can pick the display size for our main image. The default setting is medium, and you have a few options to choose from. I'll switch mine to full size, even though there will be no difference to the naked eye. I changed the setting because it will allow my image to expand or shrink on different screen sizes. That is not to say the parallax image showcase wouldn't adapt otherwise. Far from it, all the key blocks are fully responsive. The reason I switched the setting is so the image wouldn't have its size nailed down, but rather it will be displayed in its full size while taking into consideration other factors such as what page grid and block width allow. OK. Then we have the main image parallax level. This allows us to set the speed of movement for our main image. It's the main factor in forming that impression of depth that the parallax effect creates. We'll look at this as soon as I've set a new image over the main one. That's done here, in the items. As you can see, there are two items here corresponding to the placeholder visuals on top of the main image. I only plan to use one, so I'll erase item 2. There. However, if you want to add rather than subtract items, you can click here to create additional ones. Alright. I'll open the item now so we can see what settings it contains. You can see there are quite a few. The first one is for setting a new image. And to do that, I'll delete the dummy one and pick a new one from my media library. This is the one I plan to use. And please note its format is PNG. It's the best format to use when you're layering images or have transparent sections. In my case, the image I'm setting has transparent corners and a bit of a shadow. Let's see it. There. And once you've added your secondary item or image, you can set its size. We have the same selection of settings that we got for the main image. 
I'm going to leave this unchanged because I plan to adjust the image size by using the image width option below. Before I do that though, we have the image position option. With it, we can shift which corner of the main image will be covered by the secondary image. The options we have cover all four corners, and we can see the default setting is top left. However, my secondary image has virtually the same height as the main image, so we won't be able to see it change position from up to down. Let me show you what I mean. If I change the setting to top right, the image shifts horizontally but not vertically. And the same thing happens if I go bottom left or bottom right. The height of my chosen image is such that there's no room for it to move up or down. But if you pick something smaller, then you'll easily be able to change the position of your item image. Okay. Our next option is image width, the one I mentioned earlier. I want to change my image size only a teeny tiny bit, which wouldn't have been possible with the drop down selection under the image size option. So, for this, I'll switch to percentages and set 39. And there, this is the width I want. After that, we have two options that will help us adjust the placement of the secondary image. Those are the vertical and the horizontal offset. They allow for a lot more maneuverability than the image position option above. And here, for the vertical offset, I'll switch to using the viewport height and set minus 12 as the value. As you can see, using a negative value has shifted the secondary image downwards, whereas using a positive value would move it upwards. Okay. And for the horizontal offset, I'll switch the unit of measure again. The viewport width, okay. And the value will be minus 3. There we go. For the horizontal offset, the negative value moved the image to the right and the positive one to the left. Alright, let's see what's next. That will be the image set index option. This is useful if you have multiple secondary images in your parallax image showcase. Then, with the Z index, you can assign them a number that will determine the order in which they will be layered. The greater the number you set for an image, the closer to the top it will be. In essence, they will seem closer to the user. However, as I only have one item image, this won't play much of a role for me. And that brings us to the last item option, which is the image parallax level. Now, we had a matching option for the main image, and I skipped it, promising to show it to you later. Well, the time has come. To best demonstrate the effect of the parallax level options, I'll open a live page preview. So, I'll update to see my work so far, and then click here to open the page preview. And here's my page. Since I made it just for the tutorial, there's only one section in it. And by scrolling down, we can see the parallax image showcase block and how the two images within it move. Both images have a certain parallax level set by default, so the parallax setup can be quite painless. However, if you want to adjust those levels or set something different, then you have the options allowing you to do so. I'll set something new for the main image so we can see how that difference will change the look of our block. I'll set 7, for example, and update. Then let's see the page. Refresh. Now the main image barely seems to move while the item image is unaffected. But if we change the parallax level for the item image too, let me see, I'll set for example 5 here and update. And let's check on the page. Refresh. Now when I scroll, both images seem stationary, as if their movement was synchronized with the rest of the page, rather than moving at a different pace to it. Alright, I'll go back to the options and clear the values I changed for the parallax levels. I want to restore the default look of the parallax effect. Okay, there. We have one more thing in this options tab, and that is the advanced section at the bottom. It contains the additional CSS classes option. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to it when making CSS that would style your block. Okay, that's all for the Content Options tab, which means we can move on to the Style tab. And in the Style tab, the first thing we have is the Padding option. We have four distinct fields, so we can adjust the padding for each side individually. And it affects the whole image showcase. Let me show you. I'll set 50 pixels at the top, and we can immediately see how the padding at the top has pushed the image showcase downwards. Let me show you this for another side. I'll clear this and set 30 pixels for the left side padding. 
This has moved the shell case away from the left side and forced it to shrink so it could fit the remaining space available to it. Alright, I'll clear this as well. I don't plan on adding any paddings. Following that, we have the main image shadow option. It actually contains several settings within itself. There's the color, so you can pick which color the shadow will be. I'll set this just to show you. Then we have the horizontal offset. By adjusting it and the vertical offset right below it, we can set how much of the shadow will be visible. Then we have the blur option for softening the shadow by blurring its outline. And the spread option if we want to increase the shadow's coverage. And those are all the settings we get for creating a main image shadow. I'll reset all this now as using a shadow is not part of my plan design. Give me a sec. And that's it. Our next option is almost identical. It allows us to create a shadow, only this time it's for the item image or images depending on how many you have. Although we've seen which settings are involved in creating a shadow, I'm still going to show you what effect they'll have on my secondary image. It's something worth keeping in mind if you're using a PNG format as I am. So I'll set the shadow color. It's different from the shadow that we see here. That one is actually part of the image itself. So I have a distinct color. And then if I change the horizontal and vertical offset, the shadow appears and it seems to be at a distance from my image. However, the fact is that the outermost edges of my PNG image are transparent, but they are there. And the shadow grows from the edges of your image, so it can look a bit odd like mine does now. I can add a blur and spread, but it still looks odd with the image I'm using here. I, of course, don't plan to keep this shadow. Its effects are simply something you should keep in mind if you end up using a similar item image. I'll just finish resetting all this. There. That was the last of the style options. It means there is only the advanced tab left. The options here are something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and they serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. For example, there are responsiveness and motion effect settings here. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the parallax image showcase block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. And that brings us to the end of this video. We've gone over all the options you'd need to create your own parallax image showcase. As you've seen, making this amazing and visually very effective showcase takes only minutes. And it's super simple. You don't need any particular technical knowledge to do it. And if you had any questions, hopefully this video managed to answer them. Still, if there's anything unclear or if you have any comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.